Hey guys, welcome to another lesson of Pro Teachers Noob. Today, today I have, well, almost as always, Bianca. Hi, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. <laughs> I did a pretty good job there, didn't I? You did really good. Well, today we're going to be going over Batman Death by Design, the first comic done by um, Me. Chip. I wrote this comic. Your name's Chip Kid. Yes, how'd you know my pen name? Chip Kid's a guy. Yeah, yeah, that's totally my pen name. No, I mean an actual guy. Yeah, my pen name is a dude's name. He doesn't exist. He's trying to steal my name, Robert. We have to get this guy. Bianca. Robert. Do you want to get started or not? Maybe. Okay, anyway, and for the record, if any of you guys are going to do that mass downvoting, why don't you actually downvote and not bot me? Seriously. <laughs> but, of course, by the time this airs, that, that whole situation might be resolved. So, hello, people in the past. Hello. Hello, I'm the doctor. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, this was his first time doing an actual comic. Um, he usually would do some type of, you know, collections or encyclopedia type books. And, um, encyclopedias? Like DC encyclopedia. Oh, okay. Or uh, <laughs> he also had done a book, a book dedicated to the Bat manga, the old one from the 60s. Oh, the 60s ones. I was going to say, oh, I just got the, uh, the other one, but then I realized that I'm pretty sure the author's a girl. Anyway, um, but yeah, with art by Tom Taylor. And this is about to be a throwback to the old days of Batman, his golden age era. Wait, did you say the art was by Tom Taylor? Dave. Dave, okay. Dave? Dave's not here! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm doing that for, right? I, I've heard of I've heard Cheech of it. And I Chung, don't... Cheech and Chung. Oh, so that's what it was. No, I don't watch I'm Cheech Dave. and Chung, but I know the reference. No, I'm Dave. Dave? Yes, Dave. Dave's not here. Ah, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so this is going to be a throwback to the old, old golden age. And you can probably tell by his costume already. Yes. Oh, just look at those designs. Story by Chip Kidd. Art by Dave Taylor. Uh, the Ugh, he's too pretty. <laughs> the inspiration for the story came from two real-world events. The demolition of the original Pennsylvania station in 1963 and the fatal construction crane collapse in Midtown Manhattan in 2008. What if, despite the years they were, and, and despite the years, they were somehow connected? And what if they happened in Gotham City during a glorious golden age? Okay, here we go. Beta testing, Grappletron, Prototype, version 3. The first two were spring-loaded, limited range. This one's powered by a micro-ionized reactor. Alfred's idea. I, may, I have my doubts and hopes, as ever. Target, the old Wayne Central Station. Will I miss it? So far, so good. Great, actually. Nuts! Sigh and sigh. Doubts, one. Hopes, zero. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Oh my gosh, did he hit his head? Nope. That oh. was smooth. No, you old lump. I won't miss you at all. <laughs> <laughs> and citizens of Gossam, I stand before you humbled at the prospect of this opportunity. The old Wayne Central Station has long since served its purpose, and so we bid it farewell. Decades ago, before I was born, my father commissioned it with the hope that it would literally bring the people of the city together. And for a long time it did, but the city has changed, and with it, the habits and the needs of its people. And the old station has long since become unused and obsolete, which means it's time to make way for the future. It's the dawn of a new age for Gotham, not just right here, but all across the city. We are growing, building, progressing on our way to a brighter future, and this will be the gateway. 
Today we break ground on the new Wayne Wayne Central Day. Massive crane collapsed in Midtown. Cause still under undetermined by Richard Frank. Got some Gazette newsroom. Frank in here. Richard Frank, newly hired ar ar architectural critic for the paper, just out of Harvard. Ah, oh, great. Yes, Chief. The Gazette is taking a big chance on him. He knows it. What's up? Elliot Osborne, editor-in-chief of the Gazette for as long as anyone can remember. Two Pulitzers. Seen it all and corrected the spelling. Thing. Cut him, he bleeds ink. Nice job on the crane story. I want to, you, to keep you on it. See it through. What? I'm not an investigative reporter. He was just there at the scene. But, sir, I... Save it. You were at the scene. Close the door. Sir, I was at the scene as a critic. This whole thing, it's a coincidence. Kid, I am hereby declaring on this story you are now a reporter. The reporter. Construction cranes simply do not just plummet from the heavens, narrowly missing one of the city's most prominent citizens. On the occasion of its finally on his finally confirming the extremely controversial dem and demo demolition of what many have called a major monument to his beloved father's legacy. You're being there to wax wittily on the ceremony, notwithstanding coincidence, this is not. Not in this town. You will pursue this. Yes, sir. God, where? Where do I start? Is he looking over everything? Oh, God. Cindy Sill. I nearly forgot. Mr. Wayne, your 10 o'clock is here. Miss Sill. Okay, let's get this over with. Okay, let's get this over with. Thanks, L'Oreal. Send her in, please. Um, I already did. Yikes. Ahem. I'm, I'm sorry. Welcome, Miss Cindy, please. I don't care how beautiful she is. I'm shutting this down as soon as I know what I need to. Cindy, have a seat. And it's Bruce. Thank you, Mr. I mean, well, I'll just come right out with it. I would imagine you know why I'm here. I have an idea, yes. Well, I'll just lay it on the table then. Mr. Wayne, you're a very in a very unique position to defend this city. I'm aware of that. Then defend it, please. I don't know how else to say it. The Wayne Central Station is a crumbling hulk. That's, that's also the single best example of a patri monumental modernism in America. It's one of the city's, cities, the country's greatest treasures of urban architecture. Of course, it's crumbling. No one's looked after it for close to 20 years. When your father basically goes into detail about how when he commissioned it, it was a great modern marvel. Like, yes, and that was the problem. Greenside's mantra has been well documented, effect before everything, and they included structural integrity. The soaring vault of the reception area wasn't bolstered with struts that would have interrupted the space, uh, yeah, interrupted the space or providing the necessary support. Instead, the outer skin was supposed to do that, and it could have, and it could have had it been properly fortified, but it wasn't. And with time, it started to decompose. Then alternative mass transit choices started popping up and the explosion of automobiles. It was clear where things were going, literally. In short, Miss Sill, here are the facts. At this point, the properly restored Wayne Central Station as it exists now would actually cost more than simply tearing it down and starting all over again. I'm sorry, but that's the undeniable truth. So this is just about money? Really? Forgive my presumption, but why is that a problem for you? Look, I care about this. I'd be happy to dedicate all of my time to making this happen. The history of this building was my graduate thesis. I could do fundraising, give lectures about the structures, uh, anything. This is not good. Everything I had read, seen, I was ready to hate her. I was counting on it. I'm much, much better with people I can't stand. She should be an overprivileged, self-entitled, spoiled, sanctimonious snot. Like me. Not this. Not, a, not so impassioned. Informed. Not so imperfectly perfect. Good God, it's unbearable. Not because he's so damn cute, uh, and articul uh, articulate, well-mannered, and smart, and, duh, powerful. It's because, in spite of all that, no matter how he tries to hide it, he's just so sad. This should be about your father's legacy. Your legacy to Gossam. I am well aware of my legacy to this city, and I am building it my own way. So much for sad. Make that pissed off. Well, I guess that's it then. Before I go, would you at least answer one question? Certainly. Why did you even agree to meet with me? You had everything to gain from the crane accident and probably the means to make it happen. But now, because, because I, oh, skip it. I know that look. Wolf, close enough, I guess. Miss Sill, 
Lucinia, please. Is it completely out of the question to consider that the lady might have a point, sir? Alfred, I could exactly, t I could, can't exactly tell her that building my own covert transit hub under the site will be much, much easier if we raise the building. Somehow, I don't think that will sway her. Besides, Rumas may be an, an insufferable, affected, uh, narcissistic creep, but he's also a genius. He won the competition for a reason. His plan to recycle the carbon emissions from in and around the city to nourish all the flora inside it is inspired. Speaking of, Mr. Ruma, sir, you've received an invitation to the opening of his nightclub, the, and the ceiling. Perhaps this could be an opportunity to convince the lady of the creep's prowess. Hello? Cynthia, it's Bruce Wayne. Please don't hang up. <laughs> you have ten, 10 seconds to tell me why I shouldn't. I want to apologize and explain. You had the idea, the wrong idea, completely. Does this mean you'll reconsider on the station? Well, no, but if you'll allow me to take you to dinner, I can show you firsthand the talent behind a new proposal. Please, show me at dinner. And look at that structure. Look at that. That's so beautiful. The I love the random light on the bottom. Well, that's supposed to be for the city below, actually. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Because usually cream. it's like the city on top would be something that's colored while the city below is usually supposed to be like dark and dim and all that stuff. Yep. The cream of Gotham, Gotham is high in the sky tonight at the opening of what is being billed as the world's most glamorous nightclub, the ceiling. And what a sight it is, where patrons can feel like they're dining and dancing on air. Architect Kem Rumhaas describes it as, as reductive design, taken to its ultimate extreme, introducing a brand new school of architecture he calls mini-maximalism. Seriously, and look at it. It's just one big thing of glass. Held that up would give me so much the, anxiety. Yep, held up between four buildings. That would give me so much anxiety. No, it's maximum minimalism, you fool. Oh, boy, you can already tell this guy is not a good guy. <laughs> but you can tell, what's that one moment? Like, and here's Bruce Wayne with Cindy Sill. Mr. Wayne, is there a romance in the air? Oh, I uh, definitely not. You're smelling the sterno from the buffet table. Move along, Junior. Sorry about that. Check your bag, sir. Oh, I'll keep it with me, thanks. Champagne? Not right now, thanks. Something doesn't feel right. Or am I being paranoid? Champagne, miss? Sure, why not? So, what do you think? Well, as long as I don't look down. Oh, oh my God. You look <laughs> at that. From that perspective, yeah, you'd probably be like, oh, God. Bro, there are elevators like that, and I hate it. Eek! Um, sorry about that. Oh, no trouble. Hope I didn't get didn't get any sterno on you. Let's sit before I yawn in technicolor. Okay, I'll admit, as a site-specific stunt, it's amazing. But as a serious last and lasting work of uh, architecture, no. Come on. How can you mean that? Nightclubs come and go. So what does this become and become when the ceilings passe and passe? Condos? I don't think so. It's a slab of glass. Goodness, you certainly are jaded. Wait, and what? For taking the long view? That's not jaded. It's common sense. I... <laughs> like, what? God, the way I grabbed you like that. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Cynthia? Oh, no. I grabbed you, Ed, <laughs> and we barely know each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Cindy, uh, would, would anyone like fresh ground pepper? Okay, so everyone knows the drill. Wallet, jewelry, watches, etc. My associates will be collecting anything was held and will blow your heads off. So if you'd all just please, for a, com for a comedian, your timing is lousy. Oh, please. <sighs> and you are? Listen to me. People of gossip, you are all in grave danger. Doofus, they know that. <laughs> the stress on the structure were improperly calculated. It cannot sustain the weight. You must leave imme immediately. What? You're mad. Okay, kids. Game time's over. There's, and there's no game. Hundreds dead on the street is not sport. Oh, I beg to differ, four eyes. You don't know what, and you, you you don't know what you're talking about. We calculated everything. 
You are an arrogant, self-entitled whelp, easily indulged by a corrupt and cancer system, and your own poisonous vanity. How dare you! Everyone, head for the exit. Stay calm. Yes, everyone, stay calm, kick back, and relax. I warned you, idiot. I warned you. This will it, this, this will buy us all of two minutes, if we're lucky. Okay, everyone. Yes, everyone. You lunatic. Not now. No time like the present. Hurry. Pull up. Oh, as if. Boop. <laughs> hey, newsflash reports have just come in. The ceiling nightclub has collapsed and broken in two. Just moments ago, sending patrons scrambling for safety and crowds below scaring for cover. According to eyewitness accounts, the Batman was identified at the scene, as well as the notorious Joker and a third as yet un un unidentified costume figure. All were apparently involved in the destruction of the gleaming new structure, perched high on Gotham skies. Keem Rumat, the architectural mastermind behind its design, was at the sea and is reportedly unharmed. More news to come in as details emerge. From this ast astonishing catastrophe, this Gotham and Gotham and Tone Radio News. As the guy's typing up, this guy's like, um, this is the guy from earlier. Initial reports have misidentified the cause of the ceiling disaster. This reporter was there, testifying that the Joker intended to pillage the club's well-heeled opening night patrons. In the midst of it, a man with snuggles and a personal address system appeared here that proclaimed to the crowd, most of whom were already drugged by a sort of laughing gas, that the structure was about to collapse and should be evacuated immediately. This was an alert, not a threat. The stranger declared that the design itself was flawed and unable to bear the weight of the crowd. This was horrifyingly borne out. Then the Batman mysteriously arrived, and after a brief confrontation with the Joker, who did not apparently survive, he did, he jury-rigged a cable system that held up the crumbling foundation just long enough to get everyone out, and then vanished, as did the figure in goggles. What remains to be seen is how this ridiculously conceived structure could have been successfully presented and to an astonishingly naive city council, approved with a blind eye by the zoning board, irregularly misconstructed by Gotham Local 27, and then past inspection. I suspect the real villains here has yet to be revealed. More to come developing. Ridiculously conceived, astonishingly naive, egoistically misconstructed, the real villain, the Cretan. Congratulations, kid. The switchboard's jammed. Half the city wants your head. You must be doing something right. They're mad at me? For what? Reporting what happened? You did a little more than that. The Sun, the News, and the Post are all blaming the whole mess on the freaks. So why did you let me run the piece? Because I believe you. I think you're right. The Frank kid at the Gazette. What do we think? Do we have to worry? No, he's nothing. A speck. Good. But if the speck needs to be wiped away, we're on it. Hello, Cynthia. I, I I just want to see how you're doing. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I do apologize for losing track of you during all the insanity. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what happens when you hide under the tablecloth. <laughs> but, Cindy, I... Click. Mr. Frank, this letter came back to you. You forgot, and you forgot to address it. What? Oh, thanks. I, I didn't send it. <laughs> Exacto. Dear Mr. Frank, please forgive this rather unorthodox method of communication. I cannot afford to be traced, as my identity must remain a secret for the foreseeable future. Uh, first, congrats it's on your ace reportage. You appear to be a single media, the single media figure in the city who really seems to understand what's going on. Uh, and therefore, I have decided to take a chance and reach out. I'm hearing, is that a dog in the background? No, it's my turtle. Ha <laughs> ha. Therefore, I've decided to take a chance and reach out to you is what I have gathered. In close, you will find a copy of the original manifest for the crane that collapsed last week. The version of this document currently on file has been altered to cover up the tracks of those responsible. As you can see, the crane was never properly supported from the ground. Instead, it was affixed to the roof of the adjacent building, essentially hovering 15 stories above street level. Certainly an accident waiting to happen. Exactly why remains unclear, but if it was the result of a cost-cutting measure, whoever made the call is responsible. As in, whoever altered the manifest. I did not make it to the records department in time to find out who made the switch, but I guessed it to be at the orders of a certain Mr. Bart Lord. You might try asking him about it. If you do, be sure to meet him in a public place. I hear he can be a murderer and be murder in private. 
So what do you think about this so far? This is fun. Very well written, isn't it? Yeah, I'm getting really invested. Hold on while I take my dog out. All right. Well, if you give me a moment, then I'm going to go reheat my food. Cool. Okay, I'm back. Are you back? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm back. Like, interesting and totally inadmissible. Uh, I know, even if it's true, there's no way to prove it or responsibly report it. This literally has an anonymous nut job written all over it. Probably, but the manifest on file with the city is worth a look, don't you think? What? Mr. Lore, our source is called. He said to tell you that the spec is growing. The spec wants the manifest plan for the crane at Gotham Square. And he wants the manifest plan for the ceiling, too. Understood. Damn. The spec. Wipe him. Roger that. Spec is ascending. Copy. Cleanup crew on its way. Mr. Frank, please listen to me. You are in serious trouble, and I'm here to help you. You have 60 seconds tops. Who are you? A friend. You're going to have to trust me. Where? Where are you? Raise the blinds. Pull up the sash now and keep qu quiet. He's using a little thing that's projecting its voice through the glass. Yeah, I said keep quiet. Note to self. Resync this approach. Throw and throw up the sash and grab my hands. Now! He was here. I heard him. I don't like this. Let's beat it. Let's talk. Where, where have you been? Thinking. Things are getting weirder. Trust no one. You don't, and you don't know the half of it. Guess who suddenly done a 180 and decided to give you an exclusive interview? Lore, the same. Well, that's great, but I don't get it. He wants to spin it, Natch. Doesn't matter. Do it before he changes his mind. Abandoned schedule. Abandoned scheduled meeting with with BL. Repeat. Do not keep appointment with Lore. Consider this warning in your best interest. X. And he still went, Mr. Frank. Greetings. After you, let's go and get some privacy. So tell me, Mr. Frank, do you actually know any working men? Yeah, me. Uh, yeah, me. As of an hour ago, I still have a job. No, you have a perch, a rarefied post from which you can you are free to pass judgment on anyone and everything you see fit, from above it all. From above it all. Uh, let me show you something. I meant real working men who bust their humps for an honest day's wage every day. Let me tell you something, kid. Four generations of my city built, family built this city. The first one did it for slave wages and an early grave. The second one fought to organize and survive. The third figured out how to unite and thrive. And the fourth one rules. That's a very inspi and that's very inspiring. So can we start the interview? Interview is over. What? Now you listen to me. I'm going going back down. You will stay up here and think long and hard about how you're going to proceed, understand? I, someone would be back up here at five, 6 a.m. to do a day's hard work. You can go then. I'm sure you'll make the right decision. Hello. Yeah! May I come in? Mr. Lore, let's talk. No, no, you. My, but you are agitated. Whatever's the matter? Did I interrupt? What was that? That was me, power welding the door shut. My apologies to the infamous Batman and Mr. Frank. 
you weren't supposed to be here. I warned you. You're exacto. You weren't supposed to die. Just lore. I'm sorry. But, but, why don't you explain, Mr. Lore? Why don't you tell them that in five minutes there will be a timer-induced electrical fire at the base of this crane, triggering a small explosion as per your explicit instructions? Why, you son of a! Strategically placed so the crane will tilt and fall west, directly across the street into the building under construction by an independent contractor, as luck would have it. And thus ridding yourself of yet another inconvenient truth teller who had the term and ter temerity to get in your way. And all appearing to be yet another unfortunate, untraceable accident. One that you're supposed to be walking away from right now. Ah! Wham! What are you doing? You're, and what you're about to do. And think about what you're doing. It's murder. Oh, I've thought about it every day for the last 20 years. You have no idea. And it's not murder. It's assisted suicide. The irony is positively Shakespearean. Perhaps, but I can't allow it to happen. We could be tr and, uh, and he could be tried in a court of law. Said the man dressed as a gargoyle so he can do whatever he wants. You are one strange, interesting person. I would have enjoyed talking more with you. Anyway, no, no. We all know they tried that already, so to speak. He'd just buy his way out of it again. Or threaten to have the juror's children disappear. Or order the judge's car blown up. No, Mr. Uh, no, Mr. Lord's time's up. Aren't you forgetting something? I'd rather not be. You're trapped up here with us. According to what she says, you won't have time to escape. Oh, that, yes, that would be true if I were actually here. Whip! <laughs> well, Mr. Exacto, as I, I must say, if you weren't trying so hard to kill me, I'd hire you. We're going <laughs> to die, we're going to die, we're going to die. Shut up. Oh, my God. What's that? It's, uh, okay, here we, here we, 20 seconds ago. What's that? It's a prototype. A prototype of what? We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. Shut up. Five seconds ago. Listen to me. This is an impact neutralizer. It emits a stasis field. Four seconds. I've never tested. Stay as close to me as you can. And it either works or it won't. Uh, um, they survived because it was a stasis field. So basically, it kept them from feeling the impact. That's super cool. I didn't know Batman can create something like that. It's playing off the Golden Age where there was such... That was borderline the Silver Age. Oh. Sort of. They're both breezing. Pulse is checked. Frank doesn't seem too bad. Lore, harder to tell. I don't like the way his pupils are dilated. Oh, great. Look, it's the Batman. Mm -hmm. Don't move. Halt. You're under arrest. So much for my public image. Batman had seen of latest crane collapse. Pattern suspected. Two victims found unconscious. Union boss critical. So that other guy was a union boss. Of course, he's being like a mobster. <laughs> Twitter appear you need a new press agent, sir. I keep replying and playing it in my head. This exacto guy. This was more than some moral crusade for him. It was personal. He said he'd been waiting 20 years to get lore. I would say that sounds rather familiar. So the question is, who has a big enough beef with Bart Lore to want him dead? Calculating potential candidates for assassination of Bart Lore, President Gotham Local 27. Based on recording disputes, both public and private, the results 3,742. Uh, it wasn't easy to get a good look at him through the glass, but Exacto didn't seem old enough to have a 20 year old grudge against anyone unless he's been harboring it since he was a child. 20 years ago, Green Arch Architect, Greenside Architect Inc. Gregor Greenside, proprietor, is engaged in conversation with his wife, Audrey. I suppose this is goodbye. Did you hear me? Loud and clear. Don't slam the door. That, that's it? Oh, well, that's what you wanted, no? What I wanted? No, not before, but it is now. Well, then, this must be your lucky day. Oh, Bart, hey, baby, that's everything, uh, everything? Dry those tears. Darn it, aren't you supposed to be in school? I'm so bored. Those kids still can't and can't even read yet. It's a joke. I turned in this week's assignment and got a bathroom pass. Understood. I'll think of something to say to the school again. Sharpen all the HB pencils and pull up the Wayne Station plant. There's work to do. Yes, sir. Today, what are you doing here? What the heck? Mm, um, hello? Hello, my name's Cynthia Steele. I need to... Hello, I'm Garnet Greenside. I... I, I know. I've been wanting the video for some time. I'm sorry it's under these circumstances. Have a seat. The, uh, door. That's rather 
off-putting, don't you? And don't you think? And yes. Well, that was Dad's litmus test for everyone, including himself. Every morning when he got here to work, that was a question we really should be asking ourselves all the time, Miss Sill. That was again. Um, what are you doing here? Good question. What are you doing here? Well, I am trying to find your father. Join the club. I've told everything I know to the police for all the good that will do. But aren't you worried? Miss Still, I've been worrying about Gregor since the day I was born. It's my natural state, whether he's here or not. Sorry about that. You're fine. But I... Oh, what is that? What? Oh, that... That's something I developed with Dad. We call it a smart projection system. Listen, it can send a real-time three-dimensional projection anywhere you want, as long as you have the coordinates. We created it to present the large 3D architectural models of clients too far away to visit. Not that we ever had any. Huh? Huh? So, if I may ask, how's business? Do you know what we've been paying the bills with after the disgrace of Wayne Cent Central Station? Sheds and dog houses for years, literally. Oh, the power of word of mouth. You can't be serious. Oh, serious as cancer. Can I ask you something? Of course. We've appreciated your efforts on behalf of the station very much. But why wait till now to contact us, to visit? That's fair enough, I suppose. I was, well, scared. Scared of what? Of your father's genius. You can join that club, too. So you really have no idea where he is? None. He certainly isn't at home, ma'am. Hello, Cynthia. Scream. Excellent. Oh, geez. What's Lord, Mr. Laura's prognosis? Hard to say. He was a heavy smoker. Critical and crucial arteries nearly blocked. Doesn't help. He, uh, help. He, couldn't, he could snap out of it at any time or not. And how about Mr. Frank? See for yourself. Tap, 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 ding. Excellent. I don't want to disturb him. Alfred, sir, just reminding you of your lunch date with Miss Sill. Oh, don't worry. I didn't forget. Hey, Mr. Wayne, a call for you, sir. Hey, Mr. Wayne, I'm sorry to bother you, but this is Miss Sill's social secretary. Is she there? No, as a matter of fact, I... Well, that's probably because uh, she's with me. Hey, no. You, listen good and quick. Go home. You will receive further orders shortly. If you make any attempt to contact the police or that flying rat, her time is up. Hello, Miss Sill's residence. Oh, hi there. This is Bruce Wayne calling. Is Miss Sill there? As a matter of fact, no, Mr. Wayne. She has an appointment to meet you for lunch, but no one's seen her here today. It's a little strange. I see. Hmm. Could you tell me where her last appointment was yesterday? Okay, let's see here. It was at Greenside Architects. Jeez Louise, what a... Whoa! Oh, I understand Cynthia Sill was here last night. Yeah, she's an amazing girl. Very <laughs> smart. Did she indicate at all why she made a visit? Mr. Wayne, I hardly need to remind you of her passion regarding the Wayne st and the WC station. She wanted to know if I had any information on my father's whereabouts. Period. And do you? No, as I told her. But I suspect the worst. Why? Mr. Wayne, I'll be blunt. Do you have any idea what it takes to get something built in the city? Do you have any idea what happened 20 years ago? Greenside, what the hell is this? That is a lighting fixture and by Icon Inc. from Millen, Mr. Lore. It looks fine and uses the serve electricity of U.S. fixture. It will be installed in every office space and laboratory in the building. Mr. Greenside, I need to tell you that this is not union approved. Then get it approved, Mr. Lore. That is your job. Next morning, uh, Mr. Greenside, something's happened. Speak. Well, uh, and all of well, all the toilets at the work site, all 20 plus of them, have been developed a severe crack overnight. They all need to be replaced. If I if I didn't know better, sir, I'd say someone hit each of them hard with a ball pen hammer, sir. But that's just my opinion, sir. What in God's name? Real shame about the toilets, Mr. G. Those sudden tremors can be murder. Say any more thoughts on the light that lighting fixture? Haven't ordered it yet. Why you venomous little? Oh, no, Mr. Greenside, there's no need for that. And say, how's that boy of yours? He still walk to school? Okay, take, so take that example and apply it to every aspect of the building. The inadequate mortar grade, the shoddy 
about tracing the skimpy on the foundation and so on. It was in Bart, it was in Bart Lord's best interest that the Wayne Central Station would last scarcely 10 years, then tear it down and redo it just as badly if he could get away with it. Why? Why wasn't my father told? Your father was dead. Okay, why? Oh, sweetie, if you weren't about to die, we could bond. I saw you at the ceiling. You were working it. Be malicious. You definitely caught the bat's bo the bat boob's eye. Like you didn't notice. When things fell apart, you were priority one. Really? Oh, no question. What is love and what is love? Blind or just dumb? Whichever, you're the bait. Live with it. Or the opposite as the case may be. Mr. Wayne, with all due respect, you watched your father die in a single instant. I could only imagine how devastating that was. For me, it was the opposite. Since Gregor was forced to compromise on the Wayne Central Station, only to have it condemned because of those very compromises, I've been watching him die slow in slow motion, second by grueling second for over two decades. Garnet, why didn't Gregor go to the authorities? Mr. Wayne, do I even need to tell you Bartlore was the authority? He is the authority. Garnet, that can change, I. I'm sorry. I want to have a meeting at my office in 20 minutes with rumors about the final phase of the new station design. I don't suppose you'd like to attend. As a matter of fact, no, I would not. Mr. Wayne, about Miss Sill, is she all right? I don't know. Two hours ago, Alfred, the joke is going to call with the ransom demand. He'll want to talk to me. Use Wayne voice filter one. Try to keep him on the line long enough to trace the call. Then call me immediately. Yes, sir. Now. And so, on to the main, explaining about their plans and designs. And as the seaboard map on which it is based processes air, it's based off of a whale, in other words. That, and that is one hell of a fish story. You, Mr. Rumus, we both know that converting the CO2 from the car exhaust using the ionized processor spec in your plans would never work the way you describe. You're misleading your client. How dare you? Get in here and face me. Oh, I'll just stay out here, thank you. Floating mysteriously. I knew he wouldn't be able to resist. This is starting to make sense. But how does the Joker fit in it? And you are? It doesn't matter who I am. What matters is that this man is selling you a bill of goods. And you're buying. Didn't the ceiling teach you anything? You walleye worm! I have to say, under the present circumstances, you're not presenting the most compelling case. And consider this. Check the files your father's original architect tried to do. They're the same thing. It didn't work then, either. Alfred, did you get the signal? I believe so, sir. And as you expected, both Exacto and the Joker are operating out of the old central station. Is the launch right? Um, is the launch activated and ready? Yes, sir. At your command. Excellent. On my way. Debrief me in the elevator, Mr. Rumus. You excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Heck up. Esther will show you out. Okay, Alfred. We're clear. Details. Oh. It's, it's I wish I had more to tell you, sir. The Joker wants five million for Mr. Wayne by midnight or Miss Still died. And he'll bring down the whole structure. But there seems to be more to it. Why? The drop-off point is miles from where he's actually located. And I don't detect anyone in the area waiting for it. Alfred, where in the building is the signal coming from? From the top floor, sir. Perfect. And exacto, what's that story? How did he determine, sir? He's broadcasting his image from somewhere within the same building, but at a lower frequency, possibly in the depths of an abandoned subway stop. Alfred, you're the best. Crawl through? Well, hello. It's been quite the eventful evening. Mr. Greenside, that's his father. Is that you? What is this room? It is my covert sanctum. I had it built in secret when I drew up the first plans. It's to be my final resting place. I should tell you... Garnet thinks you're James Gordon or Harvey Dent, or some, even the mayor, someone who really wants to get something done in this town. I'm not sure I agree that it's that simple, but it's interesting to consider. This would be your solution. This would be how you solve the problem, the anonymity, the abandonment of self, the escape. It's kind of brilliant, actually. The form is quite effective. And the, con and the content, well, no one's supposed to know what that is, are they? <laughs> Mr. Greenside, we've got to move. I believe the Joker's going to bring this whole place down. Oh, I'm counting on it. You have your solution, and I have mine. This building and I, we belong dead. No! <sighs> Boom! Let me guess. You're actually here. <gasps> Wait, before you hit me, listen. You have me hopelessly outclassed in terms of strength, agility, and combat skills. But there's one thing I have over you. Make it quick. In order to survive, I, I will kill you. Do you have any ideas how many times I've heard that? I, and I've heard that. Boom, boom. 
I warned you. Are you okay? I didn't want to. Okay, where were we? Do you really want me to do that again? Just try it. Boom! That was a waste of time and resources, you stub, stupid, stubborn idiot. He's right. I can barely move. I'm about to black out. Garnet, what the hell are you up to? Um, excuse me? Give up. Who the <laughs> hell are you and why should I give a damn? Uh, because I have your ignition device, so come on down. You're not doing this right. Let's discuss. What? How did you? Still, anyway, we must act quickly. Oh my, I, oh my God. Uh, oh, he's doing that projection. Okay, well, show yourself if you dare. What? Dun, dun. It's all so easy, isn't it? Scare a girl half to death, kidnap her, tie her to a clock with a knife at the finish line, and also you can get the attention of the Batman. Why, you big bad bruiser, you. Well, now, that's some little mouse you, on you, gir and Girleen. I may have, and, and have to keep it for a souvenir. Yes, I suppose you could, if I were actually here. <laughs> Where is she? Honestly, would you believe you're asking the wrong person? Bam! You should have done that. You pulled the trigger. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Hold on, I'm almost. Everything's just falling apart, and they, they get them out. They get them out there. Use the same device. Oh my god! Oh my god! I I. How are your legs? Uh, sort of okay, I think. Run. The saga of the Wayne Central Station is finally over, at least for now. By all accounts, there were no casualties of the result of the mysterious demolition last night. Unless you consider the building itself, it will be missed. By this reporter and by the sounds of wide-eyed Gothamites who pass through its magnificent space every day. Despite its considerable flaws, it represents a gateway to their hopes and dreams. All of us in this troubled city can surely agree. Only something just as extraordinary could replace what has been lost. We eagerly await what it is. Way, way, and, uh, way it rises soon over the, our future horizons. Hi. Darling, I just heard that no less than Batman delivered you here this morning. Sweetness, you're going to have to cease all this adventuring. It's simply not ladylike. <laughs> Is that why you're here to tell me that? Actually, no. I seem to be missing a building, so... Whispers, do you really mean it? Oh, I mean it. Hey, know anyone who'd be interested in being our chief consultant? You're looking at her. Mr. Wayne, you're my hero. Mr. Greenside, you're hired. Excuse me, Mr. Wayne? Hired to do what? To redesign Wayne Central Station. Why don't you adapt your father's design the way it was supposed to be in the first place? And I'll get it built. We'll do it right this time. For the city. I can't believe it. I mean, this is... When do we start? Yesterday. You'll have a staff. Cindy is still will be your point person. We'll figure, out, uh, figure it out. My personal schedule tends to be erratic. Two weeks from now, all still! Back to now. One never knows what's going to come up. But you'll have full freedom to charge ahead. Regardless, this is the chance to do both our dads proud. Mr. Wayne, I'm sorry to be skeptical. Please be honest with me. Can we really make this happen? You have my word. As the kids say, exacto mundo. Mr. Wayne, you are one strange and interesting person. I look forward to, have, to many conversations with you. Okay, here we go. To the new Wayne Central Station. I have my doubts and hopes. As ever. So... What did you think? <laughs> it's over already. Yep. Like, even if the story wasn't good, I, I'd i get the book just for the art alone. The artwork is phenomenal. Although, near the end, it did get a little rushed, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I definitely didn't expect that ending. It kind of got I rushed wasn't at really the end. Here. It kind of got rushed at the end. <laughs> Like, his dad was there, but I guess he didn't know he was there, and Joker was planning something, but it was separate from everything. Yeah. It felt like it was basically three, you know, two different, well, two and a half different plot threads going on at the same time, and we just assumed they were together when they weren't. Yeah, definitely. It, it really got rushed. It could have been a two-parter. Yeah, it really got rushed in those last few pages. But I think the wrap-up was good. Exacto mundo. <laughs> so, what would you rate this on a one to ten? Eight? Ooh, eight, yeah, eight, eight and a half. 
phenomenal artwork and the story. It was a strong story up until that end. Yes. What, and what would you say? And what I thought exact was interesting, Karen, but if you ask me, I think Joker wasn't needed. No. That's the funny thing is, Joker was not needed at all. And it's was this hair was, blue, or was that just the color they decided? That's, that's just the color. I think it's still supposed to be its green, but since obviously there was no fall-on colors here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, but overall, I mean, I'm, gl I'm glad that and the, the, the amount of tech in here was very much out of the Golden Age, the pulp novel eras. Yes, I agree. I loved it a lot. So, would you want to buy your own copy? I would definitely like to buy my own copy. Okay, then. Well, like I said, it's Batman Death by Design. And check it all out, folks, if you ever get a chance. And, well, got much else to say. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Take care.